Uh, I know how difficult it is to get yourself noticed, uh, whether it is as an interviewer, a band, a photographer, but uh, I usually tend to come up with some crazy ideas uh, because I'm not afraid to do stuff that other people might consider crazy or silly. Um, Sounds like a band. Yeah. So when, when you first started out as a band, what were some of the things you did to get noticed and how easy or how hard was it for you to do that? Uh, in the beginning, it was very, <coughs> excuse me, very, uh, very difficult, obviously, because your ground roots up. You know, you you go out there, you flyer. You know, back in the old school days, like you just do flyers, you get out there, you go and go and go and go, and do it the ground roots way. But more so was like, to us, it was always about being individuals and like, you know, that's kind of what the punk rock thing is, anyways. But we were kind of a sleeve cut of that as well. On top of that, we just kind of did everything we wanted to do. You know, on top of just sounding like a punk rock band or whatever. So we tried to stand out amongst the crowd, even the punk rock crowd, um, and just really try and make a be an individual band and uh, make the stink that way, I guess. So that's that's really one of the biggest things was just doing what you wanted to do, doing it the you know the way you felt was right, and pushing as hard as you could. And we played like show after show after show, you know, seven days a week. It's hard work. Yeah, we we put your work in for sure. Yeah. Um, Dan, joining Authority Zero, yeah. um, how did it all go down? What was your first show with them? My first show with Authority was on the Flogging Molly Cruise. Mm -hmm. So um, I'd been playing with a band called The Bunny Gang with Nathan from Flogging Molly. And, uh, and so these guys knew that I was already going to be out there for that. And so I got a call from Jason and he asked me if I wouldn't mind filling in for the couple of shows that they were doing on the boat. And um, so yeah, I think they sent me like 22 songs, and uh, I was learning those. 36. <laughs> 36. <Wow. laughs> Making little videos that I would send to them, and then Mikey would send me back notes on parts and things like that. That sucked. And, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we got together for I think like three hours. I flew to Arizona, and we had a rehearsal, and then I flew home, and then a week later we were on the boat. Yeah. And uh, It requires a lot of teamwork. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Not a big time. Especially when you live in different uh, states as well, it's like it's really different and hard to coordinate. Sometimes. Yeah, but you got to communicate well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But <clears throat> communicating online was really easy with Dan. Um, it was uh, <clears throat> for us not seeing him basically until the boat. It was actually uh, really easy, smooth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right on. Um, what's the worst thing or what's the most horrible thing of living on a tour bus or a van? Uh, that's well, obviously, as much you want some space. I mean, you're you're pretty much like married together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even really that, but it's like you know, like it's like, hey, driver, can you stop that to the bathroom? <laughs> that's, another, that's a major thing about it. Is that is you know, and also just trying to get comfortable in there and get you know. But I mean, it's not that. It's not. I mean, yeah. The real thing, the reality of it is, we're we're out here living our dream, yeah. playing music. Yeah. We started in garages, you know, and we're actually in Slovenia right now. This in the mountains. Water behind us, you know. It's like, <laughs> what can you really bitch about, yeah. honestly? That's, I mean, <laughs> the tiny things are. It's tiny. They're tiny. They're like mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't matter. Yeah, I mean, like a little thing about living in a van is just, you know, keeping it clean is yeah. difficult because it's such a small space that if you're not on top of it every single day, your whole Next thing you know, you open the fan door and you've got Piles. bottles fucking <laughs> flying out. The reserves here. <laughs> bottles flying out. Yeah. Recycle. Yeah. Other like, than that, it's, it's yeah. It's you easy. look like you're you're getting along really well. Well, it's easy with this team and too. And yeah. yeah, and that's important if you spend so much time together in a bus. It's, it's, it's knowing knowing each other's mutual respect and also just what makes each other tick and just try to stay away from those things. It's like, yeah. You know, everybody everybody has their own personalities. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, it's it's very hard to do this, but I mean, the fact of the matter, I think we've all found our our complete our place in our niche of like, okay, we found our beards. We found our beards. We found <laughs> our beards. <laughs> yeah. Mike's is the best. Yeah. Jason's is the is the is the, is the, is the, the biggest. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty intense. <laughs> You're planning to grow your beard all the way through well, the thing, tour. Yes, yeah. so we did this whole thing with this tour. We we said, uh, unfortunately, I set out <clears throat> probably about three or four months before. And so I kind of like screwed myself in this whole position, <laughs> but it was like a matter of like doing a unity, you know, the collective uh, band like beard thing for the for the European tour, you know, no shade, no hair, arms, all the things. We talk about it, you know, um, and it's it's a thing of like you know, a collective effort, band wise, rather than you know just music, I guess, and like and uh, 
a love and fun thing. Mm -hmm. so. so punk rock and beers. Yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Being a band from the States and Europe, is it's it's almost impossible to not end up with a beard when you're touring <laughs> Europe because uh, because the voltages are different on, on your clippers and stuff. So unless you're going to actually straight razor shave, it's easier to just let it go. The first year I was out here, I was like, you know what, I'm going to shave this fucking thing. Plugged in my clippers, I turned them on and they went, crack, and started smoking. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? I didn't realize that there was a voltage difference. So yeah. unless you're prepared for that, just fucking let it go. Yeah. Stuck with it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just, just let it hang out. <laughs> Hashtag tour beards. Yeah, tour beards. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for this chat. Thank yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, have a great tour. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.